So my first question is, through your own experiences, how would you define AI to a middle school student? Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Um, I guess what I like to think about when I think about AI is I'd like to start with things that, you know, a middle school student might actually have seen before. So every time you do the little filters on Instagram or Snapchat and you make the little kitten ears show up, you know, that's AIs using facial recognition to identify where the top of your head is. That way those ears don't, you know, come up as chin ears instead, right? Um, it's the AI is the technology that you use when you're actually trying to tell Siri to help you look up something, but we can, you know, enable the power of computers to kind of crunch on some data and find patterns in those data um, in a way that makes it much faster than humans could do it um, and give us answers that kind of help us solve problems that we care about. Finding ways to take it to take advantage of computers, to let computers do tasks that would from our perspective, require intelligence. So things that require problem solving, uh, learning, <clears throat> learning from experience, um, reasoning about things, uh, interpreting our experience and communicating that experience, all of which um, you know we do often fairly well, but um, there, there are problems which we would like computers to help us with and, and uh, require those kinds of skills and so artificial intelligence is about imbuing computers with those skills. The way I think of it is AI is an algorithm um, that tries to mimic human intelligence. AI stands for artificial intelligence. Um, so our goal in building AI solutions is trying to mimic human intelligence and by algorithms they are a set of rules a recipe of sorts uh, whose goal is to achieve something so what we do at affectiva is we build ai solutions whose goal is to understand human emotions, human cognitive states, um, so that you know our smartwatches, smartphones, other devices can understand or estimate human emotions, how you're feeling, kind of like an emotionally intelligent friend. Our software can be paired with any system that is trying to, um, you know, make a connection with human beings to predict something, to estimate something, to help them make a decision. Um, I think to define AI, I think AI is something that sort of uses data to build a model about any situation that it's reasoning about, and then it can make intelligent decisions. One of the main ways in which the assistant interacts with people is through um, natural language. So it's not, you know, and, and it can be spoken language where you maybe talk to your um, speaker or it can be written language where you like type something into the assistant and, and the assistant will basically sort of write your response to you. So you write some query like, I don't know, how tall is the Eiffel Tower? And one of the first problems is just understanding, okay, they wrote this sentence, uh, how do I guess um, what they want and then once I know what they want like they're asking me a question they're asking me how tall something is now I have to know what that something is I have to identify the Eiffel Tower as the you know interesting sort of entity in this query I then have to go uh, to my knowledge database right whatever that is and search it for this this answer and then I have to take the answer that's probably sort of very numerical in the knowledge base and I have to turn it back into human speech or human uh, text, like human uh, natural language. Um, but really, if you want to think about uh, about artificial intelligence, it's really how do you automate decision making? And so that sort of that robot programming by demonstration uh, requires us the, for the robot to first be able to see what you are doing and understand what that looks like. Uh, understand what you're trying to do, what kind of goals you're trying to have, you're trying to achieve, and then reason about on its own. How can it, how can it see what you're doing, and then reason about, and then figure out how can I, how it can accomplish those goals. And so, a lot of times we are not just roboticists per se, um, but we have to we have to be very um, adept in machine learning. We have to be very adept in uh, in, in computer vision. Um, we also have to understand how our work. It uh, affects human usability, um, so we have to be sort of like you know amateur psychologists uh, 
Uh, and we also have to know how the machine works itself. So we also have to be uh, engineers uh, and you know, sort of have, have an eye towards mechanical and electrical engineering. The analogies that we use when we're thinking about new technologies um, can influence law. So for example, in privacy law, whether we compare an email to a letter or a postcard really matters for the rules that we end up creating. And the people creating the rules always make these analogies. And so if, if we had decided back in the day that email was more like a postcard than a letter, then email wouldn't be private. And so if we're comparing artificial intelligence to human intelligence, we're already seeing these suggestions pop up from people like, um, we should you know, tax robots for taking human jobs. Um, that's something that you know, Bill Gates has said, and I don't know what Bill Gates meant by it exactly, but it kind of views it as a one-to-one -one replacement of human to robot rather than as what it actually is, which is a system that is going to change the workplace in a different way. It's not going to just be like a robot takes a human job. And that's because artificial intelligence isn't like human intelligence. Um, by taking in information from either the world around it or from other sources, so thinking about taking in data, sounds, sights, etc. And then it performs these actions based on that information. So um, oftentimes what we're trying to teach computers and robots to do is to take in that information and then do meaningful actions based off of that information. So we use the phrase supervised if we want to say, well, a computer is given a job, it should make a decision, and then each time the human will check. Or we can say it's unsupervised, meaning we tell the computer, well, go ahead, you made the decision and you're doing great, you have such a great track record that actually we're going to let you make that decision and be on, on, on your own. So you can talk about artificial intelligence as gradually giving more and more authority or responsibility to a computer to use information to make a decision, either to classify something or to take some action for a human.